everyone who's seen back in the holding area here. We've had a look at some of the front runners and the modern cars, but one of the things I wanted to do, it's a bit of a risk because he doesn't know I'm going to shove a microphone in his, in his face, is Chris Sharples in this wonderful Palliser car. And Chris, if I may, just jump in. Um, we've been talking to some of the guys in, in the more modern machinery, but this really caught my eye. Tell us a bit about this car, if you would. Okay, so it's a 1969 Palliser, which was um, designed by uh, an ex-Brabham mechanic, uh -huh. funded by Hugh Dibley, he used to race here in Burke 500, and initially it was sold in the United States as a Winkleman, uh, and one of the benefits of that is it was designed for Americans at the time who were already re eating too many hamburgers, so it <laughs> means that somebody with a bigger frame like me fits in it uh, perfectly. And back in the era, cars like this were run successfully by Peter Lamplow and, and Bob Evans. I've had it now since uh, 1999. It was my wow. 50th birthday present to myself. Doesn't owe me a penny. That's fantastic. How many times a year does it, does it get out? Get out most times about seven or eight times a year. Yeah. Seven or eight times a year. And the, the wonderful thing about Historic, which is what I run in, is a lot of the cost of motor racing nowadays is, is actually replacing a race car in the second year. Depreci there is no depreciation with sure. the historic car. You'll probably sell it for more than you bought it. So it makes it actually very economic to run. Have you ever done a comparison as to how, is it quicker than it was back in the day with, with modern advances? Uh, not with me driving. <laughs> That's very magnanimous of yeah. you, but you obviously thoroughly enjoy it. And is there much to do over the winter on it? Uh, actually, no, because I stuffed it in the barriers down at uh, <laughs> Hawthorns in the middle of the year. So it's almost perfect. That's fantastic. Chris, thanks for t telling us about this car and very good luck for the race. A pleasure, mate. Thank you very Chris much. Chris Sharples in the, in the Palliser, a lovely car. And you, you can see, you know, fr from these cars, the, the festival is all encompassing for cars that, that run back to the, you know, the 60s and, you know, over the whole history of the Formula Ford Festival. So what I'm going to do now is drag you completely the other way. Sorry, Anthony, for making you wander around. And, uh, of course, the other thing about the, you know, the classic side is the cosmopolitan side of the Formula Ford Festival, drivers from all over the world coming. And pole position for this one, we've got the scholarship, the USA scholarship driver, Max Esterson racing. And Max, again, doesn't know I'm coming over to him, but he's seen me looming now. Cue a bit of Jaws shark music, very possibly. Let's see if we can grab a quick word with Max. So the Team USA scholarship runner. Max, first of all, you've had a full season in the UK, third in the championship, well done on that. And well done on the Team USA scholarship. Um, tell us about your season, first of all, or, and a, a little summary, if you would. Yeah, I mean, really strong season from the start. I think we had a car to fight for wins with pretty much every weekend. So, I mean, really just solid, good in the wet, good in the dry. So, I think that's going to suit us this weekend. And you did well last year, didn't you, coming here in the festival, your, your first time out. Was it six in the final, if my memory served me well? Yeah, it was six, and it was my first time racing in the wet. So, I've got a bit more experience now, so it should go a bit better. It does count, doesn't it? Because you've got to, I guess in any form of racing, learn who you're racing against, which you've done in the UK Championship, but also learning the tracks as well. So you're starting to get into some of the circuits for the second or maybe third time. Yeah, for sure. I've done tons of days at Bren, so you know, no more rookie excuse there. So <laughs> got uh, to do well this, this week. And pole position's obviously really good. It, it is hard work in the festival because we've got, you know, four heats. So that potentially could, could have you, if you follow that through, on the outside of row two for the, for the semi-final. Um, so it is difficult, isn't it, to maintain the form through the meeting? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the easiest way is just to try to win, just keep winning, qualify first and win the heat, and then win the semi, and that puts you in a good position. Okay, well, we wish you well for the race. I'm gonna disappear off and see if we can get uh, a word with Ollie White, who's in the other car there. Just make sure we don't get tangled up in the cables. Well, good luck, Max, as well. Ollie White, if we could grab a quick word. We're listening for the whistle. We have to depart fairly quickly. Uh, Ollie, how are things for you this weekend so far? Yeah, going really well so far. Just in this race, I'm going to try and get a good start and try to see what happens in there. I think the track's drying up now, so it should be interesting. It seems to uh, yeah, very changeable today with, with wet. I think we're going to go back to wet tomorrow. And it's, it's making all of you guys have to work really hard, isn't it, on your decisions for setup? Yeah, it does, and especially when, when the track's evolving as well, because it's very last minute. Hopefully we got it right. And, yeah. <laughs> I hope so too. Well, good luck for the race. Thanks for taking the moment to talk to us. It's really good of the drivers to do that because they're psyching themselves up, getting ready for the race. They do have to actually talk to us. It's in the in the regulations that they do have to talk to us if uh, if we want to. Going to grab a quick word with Michael Moyers. Michael third on the grid, so a little bit of work to do. But uh, what, one thing we've seen from Formula Ford over the years and the racing today is that overtaking is a, a virtual certainty, isn't it? 
Yeah, and that's the beauty of Formula Ford racing, to be honest. It's, uh, there's no better category for actual racing with lots of overtaking, so I'm going to be looking to move forward for sure. And uh, what are your thoughts on the two guys that are ahead of you? Well, they're both beatable, so I'm just going to get stuck in. And uh, obviously I need to make sure I bring it home as well because it's important for tomorrow's semi-final. But yeah, we're going to give it a good shot. Well, that's good. Yeah, you've really got to keep the momentum going, haven't you, in the festival? It's about getting good qualifying, getting a good race, getting it home. And the, a DNF can put you off the back. I think historically you probably weren't around, but I, I was here watching when uh, Johnny Herbert threw it off in qualifying the year he won it. He came through all the heats. Yeah. We had a court final, semi-finals and the like. Um, so it can be done, but it's... Uh, so just really going out there and, and uh, how much does a, of a spanner in the works is the changeable conditions for you though? Oh, it's massive. It's massive. The, the changeable conditions makes it really difficult with regards to car setup. Um, but we, you know, KMR are a great team and I'm sure they've given me a car to do the job. Sure they have too. Hopefully we'll catch up on the podium. Good luck for the race, Michael. So Michael Moyers there lining up in third position. We're still okay whistle-wise. We're getting through some drivers here, which is really good to know. Let's have a word with David McCullough, who's down here in fourth position on the grid. David, happy with where you are? Yeah, uh, happy enough, I uh, Just happy it's changing conditions. Yeah. So it is, uh, I'd like to stay wet, but we have to deal, everybody has to deal with that here, so we do. So, uh, well, as long as we get around the first corner, we'll be, should be all right. Maybe try to keep that position, maybe move a wee bit further forward sure. up, but we'll see what happens. Tell us about your season so far. Uh, hasn't been a great season, there's a lot of breakdowns yep. this season, a lot of reliability issues and stuff. So hopefully hopefully it'll be a bit better. Okay mate, sorry to cut across the whistle's gone. Good luck for the race. Many thanks for talking to us, David. We're gonna back away and hand you back to Andy in the commentary box. Yes, uh, don't get run over, Richard. Uh, we, we need you <laughs> over the course of the next day or so. There's lots more interviews to be had, lots more stories to unearth across the uh, Formula Ford Festival uh, entry. We are halfway through the heats then into heat number three now, sponsored by AGM Plumbing and Heating. Great to have sponsors of races in motorsport. Yeah. That's just not something you see these days. Horse racing, yes, but motor racing, why not? And this event is absolutely perfect for it. So this third uh, heat uh, sponsor, as indeed with all of the sponsors this weekend, we thank them for their involvement. Uh, and we hope that if they've got guests here, which I'm sure many of them will have, uh, that they're enjoying the show so far. Right then, uh, let's have a look at this one then, because this is another uh, heat that is very very difficult to pick max esterson gets the pole position there max esterson uh who was sixth in last year's final but he actually had a podium in his heat he finished third uh, in the heat last year aiming to go two better this time around that of course gives him um a guaranteed top four starting position uh for the semi-final tomorrow uh, if he can do it long way to go before that 12 laps the distance for this heat he's got oliver white alongside him then in the uh, number 94 car oliver white uh who was actually a sax max champion back in 2009 which i'd completely forgot about before going on to make quite a name for himself uh, in Formula Ford racing, particularly in the uh, Castle Coombe series. Michael Moyers and David McCulloch then on row number two with Jordan Dempsey. He's been quick here the last couple of seasons. Uh, he is fifth on the grid alongside Morgan Quinn, ex Ginetta racer, who again moved into Formula Ford a number of seasons ago. Lucas Romanek, very new to circuit racing, done a lot of karting where he's had good success, lines up uh, seventh on the grid with Samuel Harrison for company on row number four. Then it is Benjamin Cochran and Ryan Campbell rounding out the top 10 ahead of Jack Kemp. And uh, Abdul Ahmed, who I haven't seen on a Formula Ford grid for a number of years now. Uh, Abdul uh, raced extensively in Formula Fords from about 2011 to about 2018. A regular top five and top 10 finisher. Good to have him back on the grid for this 50th anniversary Formula Ford Festival. And then Peter Daly, who uh, is uh, the chairman or a chairman of the BRSCC and won the historic uh, festival last year. And I think he's probably still telling people People about that now. Uh, he was can, very proud of himself. Can, can confirm. Uh, yes. <laughs> Scott, who has the, the luxury of working with uh, Peter at the BRSCC, and I'm sure has heard the story of that victory a number of times. But a very entertaining race it was, Peter, and uh, he's qualified quite well here uh, amongst much more modern machinery. Uh, Peter Barrable alongside him with Adam Higgins and Chris Knox down in 16th place. Chris Knox, uh, former Scottish mini ace, uh, but uh, I expect him to move forward from 16th on the grid, although he is in uh, rather an older car. There's a nice story about that one, actually, which we'll get into uh, a little later on. Jason Down and James Hagen then are on the night throw ahead of Robbie Parks and Kevin Donnelly with Matt Hayes and Oliver Chapman uh, with uh, then Scott Rawlinson and Chris Sharples at the back of the grid. 
so the front then, Scott, Max Esterson on pole position. He was about three tenths quicker than Oliver White in qualifying, but now conditions are rather different. I'd say we're not a million miles away here, certainly at some parts of the circuit, from having a more traditional dry line. I'm looking out of the window at places like Graham Hill Bend. It's not that wet at all now down at that part of the circuit. Surtees is also getting there, but we are still in that kind of half and half situation where some of the circuit is dry, some of it, druids and clearways, still very damp. And of course, you talk about the form. One important thing is, it's obviously the setup for the semi-finals and where you qualify is primarily going to be based on the fastest win, the, the, the winning times of the semi-final winning sessions so and where you play. So if you get the fastest semi-final uh, time, that essentially puts you on pole for semi-final one, and all the cars finish behind you. Correct, it's really cool. I should have read for the the, the the race to double check it. But I'm confident it's a case of wherever you finish depends on uh, who, where the heat winners are. So it's uh, going through. So you could end up with two semi-final winners on the front row of the grid in each of the semi-finals anyway. So it's it, it's all about it. So the dry condition will certainly help drivers like Max and these guys to go for that because if they can take advantage of them and set that faster time, it puts them in that little bit better position. But at the same time, we have also seen the inside where pole position is. It's not the best line. I've always, always traditionally seen the outside of the front race better because typically it has a flatter uh, piece of tarmac. And a great example I've got, which is basically based on um, uh, T's first, well, the first TCI UK, Ollie Taylor was sat on the outside. It was a flat piece of tarmac. He told me about that when I was doing a, a, an interview with him. And it paid off because he got the better jump on Dan Lloyd and got into turn one. I've seen it happen so many times and the outside line is going to be crucial. So I think from the front row, all things being considered... That's going to be about to get my words. Ollie White could be a shout here from the front row, but let's wait and see. Yeah, let's find out then, because the green flag is waved at the back of the grid. Heat number three for the Formula Ford Festival, sponsored by AGM Plumbing and Heating, sees Max Esterson go head-to-head -head with Ollie White from row number one. Red lights go on, the revs rise, out they go, and off they go. A good start from pole position, Scott, so a really good start that was uh, for Max Esterson, although White is now challenging, I think, as they make their way towards Paddock Hill. Ben goes to the high line, but he can't quite make it stick, and you can see now they're carrying a lot more speed into that corner than they were in the first couple of heats earlier on. Track conditions definitely improving. Up the other side towards Druids we go then. We pan around to the leaders and it is the white and blue car of Esterson that leads the way but here comes Oliver White looking to the outside line down to Graham Hill. Ben, can he sweep round the outside? No. Tries instead to take the late apex and carry good speed down the Cooper straight. That doesn't quite work either there. So Esterson from pole position does manage to hang on. Yeah. Now we go to the the side by side for third between uh, Michael Moyes and Jordan Dempsey. And oh, on the inside looks Oliver White. I think there was a little bit of contact. Uh, Edison just slides a little bit out wide, but gathers it back up again. Look at Michael Moyes. The Michael Moyes, would you believe it or not, this is his first ever festival. He's a double Walter Hayes Trophy winner. He's been prominent at places like Castle Coon before, but he's never ever competed at the festival. He's been at Brad's Hatch, the Formula Ford, but never in this event. At one point in qualifying, he was the fastest man. He was on original pole position, but initially at this start, now we've got the dry weather conditions. You can tell the pack is tighter together so now it's a dry circuit everyone's more bunched so everyone's a bit more confident this hopefully is the makers have been quite a belter of a semi of a, of a heat not right there of a heat heat number three as we see now Dempsey in fourth and in there too also is the fifth position I think that's David McCulloch as well who's the brother of Ivan McCulloch who's a former uh, double Kent Festival winner in the days when we had split festival uh, festival for different engine uh, formats whether it was Kent Z Tech or Jura Tech depending on which one was the dominant engine format so good stuff from David Ivan will be in the next heat as well I'm sure uh, on top of that so, but the front few starting to get in, in amongst it now, and already on this dry track, becoming, I'm going to be Andy, the most competitive fight, uh, heat back in the front of the field in a heat that we've had so far today. Yes, this is very close, isn't it? And again, as the conditions dry out, this is more what we expected, really. Ollie White is not letting the race leader, Max Esterson, get away, but he's also got Michael Moyers right behind him. So those three latched together as they went towards Paddock Hill Bend then to start the third lap of the race. White with the fastest lap. And there, for the second lap in a row, Jordan Dempsey trying to get up the inside of Michael Moyers at Druids. But for the second lap in a row, Moyers sees him off and manages to hold on to third. Michael seems to be struggling out of Paddock Hill Bend, though. So uh, Jordan, I'm sure, will uh, try and work out a way of turning that into a successful overtake uh, in the next lap. Also, in fact, he gets a good exit from Graham Hill Bend, and Dempsey looks to the inside, maybe into Surtees corner, but it's tricky on the inside. We've seen contact here in the earlier heats, of course, and Moyers once again, just about hangs on to third place. This is allowing the top two to escape, though. Esterson and White, I don't know if they're intentionally working together, but they're certainly squabbling uh, less than the cars behind them are, and there you can see the results. They're getting away from the uh, third place battle, and actually, Esterson with a new fastest lap, half a second clear of Ollie White. 
you know, stuff from Max. Of course, he's part of the two Team USA scholarship drivers. Uh, he's going to try and emulate in part what Joseph Newgarden managed in the Kent Festival back in 2008. We haven't had a Team USA scholarship driver win the overall, like, quote-unquote, main festival at all, but he has had Newgarden, of course, win in his Team USA scholarship year, the 2008 Kent Festival, and we still had the uh, Giratex and Z-Tex around in their own finals on top of that as well. So Max wants to be the first person to win American and Team USA driver to win the overall main festival. There is only one engine falling now with the Kents, and then up through uh, Surtees, number two, apparently clear way. The top two are having to have that advantage. Michael Moy is just trying to hold off Jordan Dempsey to turn their way out through clearways again. And having a great one so far is David McCulloch. He's staying up there in fifth position. It's great to see plenty of the Irish drivers coming back across. Well, they, we missed them last year due to some travel restrictions. Thanks to the pandemic, but thanks to are back across here and helping us celebrate the 50th Formula 4 Festival in fine style. In towards Paddock Hill Bend again at the start of lap five, so already quickly go. You can tell the pace is quicking up here. We're already up towards halfway through. As now look at the outside line. Oh, Jordan Dempsey running wide. I wasn't sure if there was a little bit of contact there between both De um, Dempsey and Moyes there, but it looks like Dempsey was the one that lost out. He's also lost position to David McCulloch and to Morgan Quinn, and now under pressure from it looks like I think that is Lucas Romanek, who started the season racing as a Kevin Mills driver, then switched mid-season to Oldfield Motorsport. He'd been run by James Oldfield, who powered, um, who spanned uh, Josh Smith. To the 2018 festival victory. So good to see the James Oldfield car running well. And him up there in the mix as well. A good little pedal for him. He's had a decent first season in the National Football League. If he's back next year, I'm sure we'll make even more impact next in 2022. Yeah, aiming to make an impact on this group ahead of him if he can, but not quite on terms with them as they cross the start finish line to start their sixth lap of the race. Ollie White, new fastest lap of the race, and he's significantly caught Max Esterson on that lap, three tenths faster than him. And the gap, as you can see, is down to next to nothing now. So the Team USA scholarship driver has a real race on his hands now to keep White behind. White is alongside him as they come out of Druids. That's the outside line for Graham Hill Bend. Not trying trying to make the move going into the corner, but instead focusing on that exit speed. Esterson getting good traction off that corner, though, as he did in the early stages of the race, to just keep Ollie White at arm's length. White uh, is a five times champion of brands, which is the uh, annual Formula 4 competition here at the Brands Hatch Indy Circuit. He's up the curb, almost into the back of Esterson, but having won that champion of brands five times, it is uh, a little strange to me, actually, that Ollie, Ollie's not had more success in the festival. He's had success in Formula 4 racing as far afield as Australia winning races at Mount Panorama being on the podium at Phillip Island but a best festival result of third back in 2018 for Ollie White who currently is challenging for the race lead in heat number three. Remember that one he went diving up the outside of Nile Murray they both ran wide and the result that was when Josh Smith snuck up the inside I know RJM remembers that well because he was commenting on that and he went absolutely berserk when that happened so right uh, <laughs> he absolutely it was a brilliant final lap as it was and Josh was snatching that one so uh, great stuff from Ollie and he's one of those drivers who perennially have come to the festival the last few years and they're always in contention they're always there the drivers like Ollie White and Matt Cowell and everyone else who will go there to the festival and they're always in with a shout in with a good chance of getting a result as like, takes that curb either he knows that line which is something which other drivers don't or he's simply him just trying to be opportunistic either way whatever he's doing is just about work in keeping on the back of Max Esther. So credit where credit's due. It's a tiny bit unorthodox, particularly when the curb should be slippery, but it's working at the moment. Well, lap number one, he tried to throw it up the inside at Clearway, so he obviously likes that tight line, but uh, not quite having the gap left for him by Esterson. Uh, and why should Esterson let it through? He's trying to defend the race lead here if he can. Jordan Dempsey back into fifth place now, by the way, ahead of David McCulloch then. So McCulloch down to sixth. The promotional spots at the moment, the top 12, remember, go through automatically. And it's that man, Peter Daly, who's just <laughs> on the bubble at the moment in six, in their 12th position in car number six with James Hagen uh, right behind him. They're nose to tail on track right now. So that is going to be a real battle royale to try and get into those automatic promotion spots. And you know what? I think Peter will be pretty happy in a field this competitive amongst much, much more modern machinery if he could get through automatically. He's in a 1988 Van Diemen. Uh, in fairness, James Hagen behind him is in a 1988 Reynard as well. So that at least the car behind won't have too significant of a performance advantage. But uh, wherever you look in this field, there are battles and they're all of significance, be that for good grip positions for the semi-final or just to make it into that semi itself. Yeah, it's, it's really good to see some of those older cars and it proves the point with Formula Ford is that within reason, the age of the car, to a certain extent, doesn't matter because if you're good enough and the car set up well enough, you can be as quick as one of the more modern contemporary machines. We've seen it before. I've seen it before when uh, the likes of Formula Ford... Uh, 
class of the 80s, particularly with Alan Davidson up there in the fifth or sixth edition. And also we had one, I think it was uh, Henry Campbell, one of the Campbells was up there. You know, Andrew Blair was up there quite well as Roman, it goes out wide and just loses that trying to put the pressure on Jordan Dempsey up the inside of him. Because I think that looks like that was uh, McCulloch. And also we had two of the, uh, I think that was Ian Goff and Lucas Roman getting involved as well. So the Roman Echols trying to recover off that small wide and past it went uh, Ian Goff, who's the brother of Stuart Goff, who has been a, a multiple time podium finish at the festival here for, uh, for a number of occasions. And uh, certainly trying to recover well as if he can. Got two of uh, Irish drivers here. We've got Jordan Dempsey and Morgan Quinn. And so uh, I think that's the wrong championship on the time of the Thomas Palmy screen. That might have to be corrected, I think. Uh, it looks more like Mazda drivers rather than the Formula Force, but we'll overlook that for a second as we see, still see Jordan Dempsey battling with Morgan Quinn. Morgan's got a slightly different uh, livery there. He's got more sort of the, the BMW M colour stripes on the side of that car. It's quite a smart looking livery. Simple, but pretty effective. And he was sporting that in the final rounds. He's tested him in the national, national Championship. Jordan Dempsey, meanwhile, he's looking for options next year. He's considering National Formula 4 again next year, but he's also been as far afield as China. He's been a Chinese F4 champion as well and have been always very prominent whenever he gets into a Formula Ford. And last year, I think when he was here last year, he was in a special Spectrum. So one of Kevin Mills' cars. We've got a different team this year, but he's usually pretty handy whatever you put him in. So good effort so far. Fourth place at the moment. He's fallen back by about roughly 1.6 seconds to Michael Moyes in third place. And again, I know he's prominent in four and four circles, but shout out to Michael Moyes. First time racing at the festival, and he's holding his own. That's now... I thought for a second that was second place. I told my brother, I thought that was uh, um, Moyes ahead of Essen, uh, um, Moyes ahead of White, but it wasn't. So that's the top two as they come up through Graham Hill Bend. Uh, we just come up towards start the last, the last lap, but Essen throws the car in through Surtees and up towards McLaren. But I have to say, if Jeremy Shaw's watching, your boy's doing pretty well in the lead here, and he's on the cusp, not yet he is, he's on the cusp of taking a heat win here, which could be a good omen potentially for the semi finals. Absolutely. Had that podium last time out, remember, in the festival heats, but didn't quite manage to uh, translate that into podium pace through the rest of the weekend. This has certainly been a good start, but now he has traffic to deal with as we go on to the final lap of the heat. Is this going to cost Esterson, or can he maybe use it to his advantage? Goes to the inside there of one of the historic cars through Druids. That puts him on the wet line, and you can see the way that Ollie White is able to close in. There's another back mark now that they're going to catch going through Graham Hill Bend. Esterson to the inside. White's going to be quicker off the corner if he doesn't get held up which he sort of does though and that might just have been Ollie White's final opportunity couldn't quite clear that car uh, quickly enough before they get down towards Surtees corner two or three turns to go White closing back in and we know he likes this tight line into clearways so does Max Esterson though he knows it he defends the inside White will be quicker through and off the corner gets in the slipstream is he going to be able to make a run to the start finish line this is the end of heat number three it's another super close finish but it is going to be a victory for Max Esterson Esterson takes heat number three Ollie White second and Michael Moyers comes home in third with Jordan Dempsey fourth Morgan Quinn in fifth one position lower than he finished uh, in his heat 12 months ago McCulloch sixth Lucas Romanek seventh eighth place for Harrison ninth Abdul Ahmed tenth goes to Cochrane now what about the final transfer spots 11th place should go the way of Ryan Campbell which it does is Peter Daly next if he is then he gets through automatically we wait with bated breath. Where is the chairman of the BRSCC? Yes. There he goes. He and he does hang on by Scott. 45 thousandths of a second. He makes it into the top 12 and he prevents the number 34 of Jack Kemp stealing it. And Jack, remember, started 11th on the grid, Peter 13th. So, pains me to say it, but that was quite a good drive. I said it before earlier on, I'll say it again. Doesn't matter how you do it. If you qualify, you qualify for the semi final. So, I'll say on behalf of BRCC, well done, Chairman. That was not a bad <laughs> drive, actually, and uh, he's sort of heavily up, and that was not too bad, and uh, he's pretty handy, that Van Dien, when he can. He hasn't, he didn't have that many outings in, in Northern Four, four Fords. On the wickets, he couldn't do it. He was busy clerking a certain British GT Championship, uh, and also he's been doing some clerking duties for W Series as well throughout the season as well, uh, as much as many duties have been BRCC Chairman. But um, on the race he has done, had some ups and downs, but he's still as prominent as he ever was in one of these cars, and again, definitely showing some decent pace. So, good effort. At least he's got a bit of time to relax and watch the rest of the race for the afternoon. And that's his work done for today. And so he can uh, get himself ready for the semi-finals. And I'm certain as well, as he was last year, with that kind of pace he's setting, being mid-pat like he was, he'll be another threat for the historic final again, particularly if he gets dry. He's got some of the mix in there as well. So exciting third heat. And they're just getting better and better as the circuit gets drier. And heat four should be even more, hopefully. And really nice finish up to the first part of our festival adventures this weekend. Uh, yes, and that uh, fourth and final he will be next out on track, so we look forward to that one. Uh, for now, though, drivers heading down into the pit lane. Max, Des Max Esterson, the race winner, Oliver White second, just under two tenths behind him, and Michael Moyers, a podium in his first ever heat at the festival, Richard. 
Thanks very much, Andy. Let's go and have a word with Max Esterson. The great thing for me about that race was if you look at the, the top four positions, four different chassis all represented there. And it's Max Esterson who uh, takes the win. Max, we had a quick chat before you went out. Uh, and now I've got to look up when I was looking down in the car, but you're taller than me. But anyway, great race, great start to your weekend. Yeah, really happy with that. I mean, really tricky. Ollie was super quick. I knew I just had to get the exit off the last corner and I'd yeah. be okay. So I had to defend the inside a few times in the last corner, but I knew if I could get the power down smoothly, I would be able to get enough of a gap to, uh, you know, just kind of maintain the lead, just slow and steady, really. What's the situation with you? Obviously, the, this is a huge event that you, you're taking part in and you were third in the National Championship this year. Will you stay in Formula 4 1600 next year or do you look at other options? Uh, I think we're looking at other options, but I think I'd like to come back next year for the festival. Yeah, that'll be good. Always good to see you. And great to have such a strong international contingent as well. Thoughts for the, the rest of the day and looking forward to the semi. You won't know who you're up against directly around you in the semi-finals until we till they're all run all the heats are run but um, initial thoughts yeah just trying to keep the same mindset just focus forward so i mean i got two more races to go this heat doesn't mean much besides where you start in the semi so sure. we'll have to do well in the semi and try to win the final anybody back in the states watching the stream do you know uh lots of people but yeah i'm sure they're all watching but well, we'll say you hello hi to them yeah hello and uh thanks to the team usa scholarship and load mc racing course ray race cars because i think i had the best car out there today yeah they're built near to me actually where i live so always a shout out for yeah, gavin and the boys this is their home track so <laughs> we'll try to try to get it on sunday many congratulations max i'm sure we're going to see you on the podium a little bit later on in the weekend max esterton who takes the win let's have a word with uh, oliver white do you, do you mind Ollie as opposed to Oliver? Is that all right? He doesn't mind. Yeah, as long as it's not rude, we'll keep it nice and civil. Ex-champion of brands, Ollie, of course. And um, so not a home advantage because these guys are all familiar with the track, but uh, fastest lap there as well. Yeah, it was a good race then. Max, um, there were still a few damp patches around on the track. So, so as we, either of us hit them, we had oversteel or whatever. But yeah. Yeah, I tried to get past. I just couldn't. He, Max, they made them mistakes and yeah, I couldn't quite get through. Someone like yourself, you, you're no stranger to winning championships, obviously champion of brands and uh, Walter Hayes and so on and so forth. But um, do, does that relieve the pressure for you as a driver in this type of event, knowing that, you're, that you've got the kit to do it and the ability to win these races? Uh, to be honest, no, I don't really think about what's happened in the past. I just think about right now. So yeah. to be honest, I don't think it makes any difference, really. Anything you want to change on the car or are you just happy with the way it is today? We'll, we'll, we'll make some tweaks, but I think the weather's going to change tomorrow anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. That's great. Well done. Cracking drive, P2. Good to see you on the podium. We'll hopefully catch you a little bit later on. Third position goes to, to Michael Moyers. Let's see if we can get Michael down for a, a, a quick chat. He's just having a, a celebration with Max Esterton. Michael, thanks for joining us. Congratulations. Double chat because we had a quick chat when you were getting ready to go out. And uh, good enough race for you? Yeah, it was all right. Um, I just felt like lap two, three, four, I was going into a bit of a rhythm sitting in third, okay. just catching Max and uh, Ollie. And then uh, Jordan, uh, had, we had a bit of contact going into Druids, and you can see it's bent the bottom wishbone on the right. Oh, right. So I think I had a bit of damage after that. So considering we've had damage, I think to come home P3 is pretty, pretty, I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> I was holding on towards the end. The other thing I love, and I mentioned it earlier on in, in the set of interviews we're doing just now, is that four different chassis manufacturers in the top four places, that is how competitive FF1600 is. You know, I've got nothing against one mate championships, but. Who needs it when you can have chassis builders competing against each other as well? Exactly. This this is where it's at. This is where young drivers and older drivers um, really thrive, to be honest. But, yeah, young drivers should be doing this without a doubt. It provides the best race and gives you the best learning, the best skill sets. And, well, it's shown in the racing, isn't it? It's just yeah. unbelievable. And there's constant development with the cars as well. So yeah. that's where it's very different to single make. Michael, many thanks for that. Well done on third place. We'll Thank see you, you for the semis. Thanks a lot. Thank Cheers. you very much. So Michael Moyer's completing our podium there for our third heat of the day.